Welcome to Tech and Trek Exploring the Past, Powered by the Future. I bet you didn't know that in ancient Rome, urine was a common household item used for cleaning. Yes, you heard that correctly. The Romans, known for their advanced engineering and architectural marvels, also had some rather unconventional methods for maintaining hygiene. Yes, you read that right. Urine was collected in public urinals, and then repurposed for various cleaning tasks. Romans used urine to disinfect wounds, whiten teeth, and even wash clothes. The ammonia in urine acted as a powerful cleaning agent, making it surprisingly effective for these purposes. As shocking as it may seem to us now, this practice highlights just how different medical and hygiene practices were throughout history. The use of urine was not limited to Rome, it was also found in other ancient cultures. This essay delves into the bizarre world of historical medicine, exploring the unusual and often cringeworthy treatments used to cure the sick. From bloodletting to the use of leeches, history is filled with medical practices that seem outlandish today. From ancient civilizations to the medieval era, we will journey through time, uncovering the strange practices that our ancestors believed to be effective medicine. Imagine using mercury to treat syphilis or applying moldy bread to wounds as an early form of antibiotics. Fasten your seatbelts because some of these treatments will make you grateful for modern medicine. The advancements we've made in medical science are truly remarkable when you consider where we started. So, join us as we explore the fascinating and sometimes horrifying history of medicine. The history of medicine is a fascinating and often unsettling journey. It's a story of trial and error, of innovation and misconception. Before the advent of scientific methods and evidence-based medicine, treatments were often based on superstition, religious beliefs, and observations of the natural world. These factors led to some truly bizarre medical practices that might make your skin crawl today. Imagine a world where drilling a hole in your skull was considered a viable treatment for headaches, or a time when leeches were thought to suck away illnesses. These practices, while seemingly barbaric today, were once at the forefront of medical knowledge. It's easy to look back at these practices with a sense of amusement or horror. However, it's crucial to remember that these treatments were often employed with the best intentions. Without the knowledge and technology we have today, our ancestors relied on what they observed and believed to be true. Theories about the body and its functions were often based on limited understanding. For example, the ancient Greeks believed in the four humors, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. They believed that imbalances in these humors caused illness, and many treatments such as bloodletting were aimed at restoring balance. Bloodletting, the practice of draining blood from a patient, was perhaps one of the most enduring and widespread medical practices in history. It was practiced for over 3,000 years, from ancient Egypt to the 19th century. The rationale behind bloodletting was based on the humoral theory, with practitioners believing that removing excess blood could cure a variety of ailments, from fevers and headaches to plague and madness. Bloodletting was performed using various methods, including leeches, cupping, and venesection, which involved cutting a vein to release blood. While bloodletting may have provided temporary relief in some cases, it often did more harm than good, weakening patients, and sometimes even leading to death. Despite its risks, bloodletting was a cornerstone of medical practice for centuries. Physicians believed that balancing the body's humors was essential for health and bloodletting was seen as a way to restore this balance. The practice was so ingrained in medical tradition that it was used to treat almost any condition, from minor ailments to serious diseases. However, as medical knowledge advanced, the dangers of bloodletting became more apparent. By the late 19th century, the practice began to decline as new medical theories and treatments emerged. Today, bloodletting is largely viewed as a misguided and harmful practice a stark reminder of how far medical science has come. Yet, it also serves as a testament to the lengths to which humanity has gone in the quest for healing and understanding the human body. Trepanation, drilling into the skull. Trepanation, the practice of drilling or scraping a hole in the skull, is arguably one of the most unsettling medical procedures in history. Archaeological evidence suggests that trepanation has been practiced for thousands of years, with evidence of the procedure found in skulls dating back to the Neolithic period. While the exact reasons for trepanation in prehistoric times are unknown, it is believed to have been used to treat a variety of ailments including headaches, seizures, and mental illnesses. Some anthropologists believe that trepanation may have also been performed for ritualistic or spiritual purposes. Slimy saviors of the past. Leeches, those blood-sucking worms, might make your skin crawl, 
but they were once considered an essential part of a physician's toolkit. Like bloodletting, leech therapy or hirudotherapy was based on the humoral theory. Leeches were believed to remove bad blood and restore balance to the body's humors. Leeches were used to treat a wide range of conditions, from headaches and fevers to gout and skin diseases. While the use of leeches in modern medicine is limited, they are still used in some surgical procedures to promote blood circulation. The dawn of reason. The decline of bizarre practices. The 18th and 19th centuries witnessed a revolution in medical thinking. Advances in anatomy, physiology, and microbiology led to a better understanding of the human body and the causes of diseases. The germ theory of disease, which proposed that microorganisms cause many illnesses, replaced the humoral theory. This shift in thinking led to the development of vaccines, antibiotics, and antiseptics, revolutionizing the treatment of infectious diseases. As scientific knowledge advanced, the flaws and dangers of many traditional medical practices became apparent. Bloodletting, for example, was increasingly recognized as harmful, and its use gradually declined. The birth of modern medicine learning from the past. The journey of medicine is a fascinating tale of trial and error, innovation and discovery. The transition from bizarre practices to modern medicine was not a sudden shift but a gradual process. Over centuries, medical practitioners experimented with various techniques, some of which seem strange to us today. While some practices were abandoned, deemed ineffective or even harmful, others evolved and adapted to new knowledge. For instance, the practice of bloodletting, once widespread, was largely discarded as our understanding of human physiology improved. The use of leeches, once based on the humoral theory, is a prime example of how old practices can find new life. In modern times, leeches have found new relevance in microsurgery, where their blood-thinning properties proved valuable in promoting blood flow and healing. The history of medicine, even its most bizarre chapters, provides valuable lessons. It serves as a reminder of how far we've come and how much we owe to the curiosity and persistence of early medical pioneers. These lessons highlight the importance of critical thinking, scientific inquiry, and a willingness to challenge established beliefs. Critical thinking allows us to question and refine our understanding, ensuring that medical practices are based on solid evidence rather than tradition or superstition. Challenging established beliefs is crucial for progress. It encourages innovation and the development of new treatments and technologies. By understanding the mistakes of the past, we gain insights into the complexities of the human body and the diseases that afflict it. We can avoid repeating these errors and instead build on the knowledge that has been painstakingly acquired over generations. This continuous learning process helps us strive for better, more effective treatments in the future. The history of medicine is not just a record of past practices, but a foundation upon which we build the future of healthcare. The enduring significance, bizarre practices, and their legacy. While we may view these practices as bizarre and outdated, they hold a significant place in the history of medicine. They reflect the ingenuity and resourcefulness of our ancestors in their quest to understand and heal the human body. Furthermore, some of these practices, though based on flawed theories, inadvertently stumbled upon treatments that have found new life in modern medicine. For example, the use of maggots to clean wounds once a common practice is now being revisited for its effectiveness in debriding necrotic tissue. Beyond the bizarre reflections on medical history, exploring the bizarre practices of the past allows us to appreciate how far medicine has come. It also encourages us to reflect on the current state of medicine and question whether some of our practices today might be viewed as bizarre by future generations. As technology continues to advance at an unprecedented rate, we can only imagine the possibilities and challenges that lie ahead for the future of medicine. Join the conversation. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on these bizarre medical practices? Can you imagine a time when these treatments were considered cutting edge? Share your thoughts and reflections in the comments below. Let's continue the conversation about the fascinating and often strange history of medicine. Thank you for watching Tech and Trek. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.